welcome to my human design channel. My name is Juji. This is HD by Z. If you're new, this is a space where I talk about human design and relationships a lot. I do a lot of couples analysis for celebrities. I talk about the system itself, and sometimes I interview people I've worked with in the past so you can get an idea of what human design can do for you. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I'm going to break down the top five pitfalls that I see with Sex and the City. It's an iconic show. We all grew up watching it. But before I do that, I want to remind you all of my information to work with me will be in the show notes in a master link. You can go to my website and see that I do individual introduction readings, couples readings, follow-ups. I also do relationship coaching. I'll also drop a link to some of the articles I've written recently for Elephant Journal, where I talk about human design and relationships. And I also run a group program for women called The Beehive. We do weekly Zoom calls. We have a Slack chat where you can ask questions 24-7. And you have access to all of my archived workshops about human design. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to start today by talking about my own personal experience, and then we'll get into SATC. So growing up, my parents didn't really get along. They got divorced when I was eight years old, and then they tried to get back together. But when I was 12, they split up for the final time. And then there was this big custody battle that my parents waged for about five years in court. And these two people absolutely did not like each other. So my story isn't unusual. You know, a lot of us statistically come from divorced families. And a lot of us weren't shown what it means to be in a healthy relationship. So we looked outside of ourselves for that model. And Sex and the City came out around 1999. And it was hailed as this revolution, right? So a whole generation of women grew up with this as their baseline for how to relate to men. So many of us, myself included, tried to emulate this blueprint that we were given. I mean, I was obsessed with this show. I moved to New York City when I was 22 years old. Uh, Somebody gave me the trivia game for Christmas one year, and I beat it in under 10 minutes. I mean, I even worked for Patricia Field, the costume designer for the show, for a little bit. And... Everybody I knew knew every single episode backwards and forwards. One of the things that intrigued me the most about the show is this inquiry that Carrie had launched into relationships via her column. And it was actually a few weeks ago when I said to somebody, I think I'm the Carrie Bradshaw of human design. And as soon as that fell out of my mouth, I knew it was true. The difference between the two of us is that Carrie didn't have this amazing tool, right? Her column always started, I couldn't help but wonder. And when I have to wonder about someone, I get to look at their charts and I don't have to wonder anymore. It shows me exactly what's going on between two people. There's no guessing. And aside from not having human design, there's a lot of things that this show got wrong. In fact, there's a lot of things that I believe we have to unlearn because of sex in the city. The first thing that I find a little troubling is the way that modern women were being presented, right? This was the first time that women were earning their own money in a competitive way to men. The series was billed as the new feminism, and they were rebelling against the patriarchy, the rules of dating, but they used the rules of the patriarchy instead of stepping outside of them. So to me, it was like fighting fire with fire. Yes, you have this sexual freedom. Yes, you have this financial freedom, but that doesn't mean that you're here to try and relate to men like you believe men are trying to relate to you. That's not creating a conscious partnership. And I truly believe that in this day and age, women are really waking up to this idea that we're not here to emulate men, not in politics, not in the boardroom, and not in relationships. 
So the first thing is the battle of the sexes, right? Men versus women. And we no longer see things as such a black and white duality in our world. We see it as the divine masculine and the divine feminine and how there's a dance between these two. But then there's also this battle within the group itself. I mean, this goes far beyond, you know, a friendly discussion. There was a lot of judgment coming from within in the group about the way that other women wanted to live their lives. And I really don't see this as a healthy way of relating. Miranda often expressed her disdain about Charlotte and her choices. You know, there was an episode where Charlotte's like screaming on the phone, I choose my choice, I choose my choice. You know, she wanted to be in a traditional marriage. She wanted to have children. I think the way she went about it is problematic, and we'll get into that in a minute. But then Miranda was also judging Carrie a lot of the time for being weak around the man that she was in love with. And that's not really a helpful, safe space to be. And we as women are here to really support one another and not judge one another for each other's choices because we are all so different and unique and we want different things. So who am I to say that it's incorrect for you just because it doesn't jive with what I want in my life? So then there's a societal pressure that they're rebelling against this, you know, singledom that they don't like being labeled as, but then there's also within the group a lot less support than you would believe. You know, this whole story was about how these four women like loved each other so much and spent so much time discussing their love lives together. But there was a lot of opinions flying around instead of like real conscious support. The third thing that I find really problematic is this glamorization of casual sex. I know it's called Sex in the City mostly because it needed to have this shocking title to entice people to watch it. But something that somebody said to me not long ago really resonates that everything is about sex except for sex, which is about power. And I guess like power in the city doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely, but that's really what this was about. It was about a power struggle and supposedly being promiscuous was a way to take back your power, your bodily autonomy by giving men exactly what they say that they wanted without expecting anything in return. And as a result, a whole generation of women believed that being a Samantha would prove to everybody that they were strong, that they were independent, that they weren't going to fall into the normal traps of society. And I would say that I fell into this trap too, you know, from a scale of Charlotte to Samantha, I was definitely more on the Charlotte side of things. But experimenting with casual sex in my 20s really helped me to see that I wasn't down with that, you know, and I actually felt a certain amount of guilt for why I couldn't have these kinds of casual encounters without catching feelings for somebody, you know, and we don't need another reason to beat ourselves up, honestly. And the funny thing is, if you look closely, Samantha definitely demonstrates having feelings for a man. It's just being expressed in a really unhealthy way. There's one particular man that she really fell for, and he seemed to be like her male counterpart. He was promiscuous, he was emotionally detached, and she got really badly burned by him. And the way that she reacted to that was incredibly immature. It was this like revenge fantasy that was like so uncharacteristic of women in their 40s. I'm rounding the corner to 40, and I can't imagine doing something like that. And then afterwards, we never hear about him again. It's like, poof, he's just gone. But that's not really how feelings work. That's not really how the psyche works. So this idea that you can just snap your fingers and move on is really not a healthy model for how we're here to like grieve relationships when they don't work out or try to learn from our experiences. And speaking of learning from experiences, example four of what we're here to unlearn about sex in the city comes down to the center plot point, which is Carrie and Big 
or Carrie and Aiden. This was the big like 50-50 split among most women. And one seemed to be the obvious choice. You know, Aiden was dependable. He was healthy. He was available. And there was this consistent rejection of that by Carrie. And it seemed like she was just much more comfortable with the familiarity of the dysregulation that Mr. Big created within her. And she ran back to that every chance she got because it was her comfort zone, the uncertainty, the ambiguity, the chase. She depended on this high to be able to feel like she was actually having an emotional experience. And we've all been there, you know, like that's what our early 20s were all about is the butterflies and the upheaval and the like, what the dysfunction, whatever. And if you grew up in a chaotic household, like a lot of us did, this seems like the ideal place to be because the dependable available guy doesn't cause that internal upheaval and we see that as wrong and bad and the show really romanticizes this right that Carrie's really only comfortable when she's uncomfortable and I just want to point out that this dysregulation in Carrie's nervous system is not solely caused by Carrie's partner as the show would have us believe it is a co-created lack of communication based on a lot of assumptions and stories. So there are two people in the relationship behaving badly, and that doesn't create any sort of solid foundation for partnership. And Carrie, in the end of the series, ends up with Mr. Big, which I feel is a really bad message to be sending to people that if you just wait around for somebody to be dysfunctional for a really long time, you will eventually get the guy. Eventually, he will relent and tell you that you're the one. The other thing about this dysfunctional relationship is that it actually shows us just how insecure Carrie is. She relied so much on external validation from her friends, from being a writer with her success in writing, and then the validation of her partners. She's looking for approval from the outside. And as soon as the feedback from her girlfriends is something negative, she usually runs away. She cannot handle being told that she's making bad choices. And so something that we're here to unlearn from that perspective is that like, you know, by your 30s and 40s, which is how old these women were during this show, friendship is a lot more about having a female support system, but it's not about getting like the indefinite approval of your relationships. And it's not about relying on your external life to make you happy on the inside. This is why I believe the show didn't really age well, because I feel like we've reached this point of understanding in our consciousness that this doesn't work. I mean, if you are here watching this video right now, you understand that you can't just sit around expecting your insecurities to disappear or expect your partner to disappear them for you. No, this takes a lot of introspection and a lot of inner work, which none of these women were doing. Romantic relationships shine a light on all of our insecurities, right? They touch us in these deep, dark places and these tender points that we can't ignore after a while. And that's what we were witnessing with Charlotte. She was so caught up in creating this perfect life that looked beautiful to the outside world, and she didn't ever try to connect to her partner. She just cared if they checked all of her boxes, and this came to really bite her in the ass. She rushed into a marriage with somebody she barely knew and who was incredibly emotionally unavailable, and then she woke up one day horrified, like, oh my god, how did I get here? You know, this is the image that I wanted to portray, but this isn't the marriage that I wanted. So there was no self-reflection being done by any of them, not during the show, not even in the movies. You know, the in the first movie, Carrie gets left or jilted at the altar, which is its whole separate video I want to make. And there's not even a mention of going to a therapist or some sort of support group after this huge trauma. 
it's just like raw dog in life, hoping that, you know, you'll be okay afterwards. And we all know now that this is not a sustainable way to live in the world, that we all need support in the things that we go through. And these women didn't know what they were doing. It was the blind leading the blind. It didn't make any sense. Which brings me to my final point, that there was a lot of oversimplification happening in this show. And they missed a lot of nuances of what bonded relationships are. You know, for somebody who was um, dissecting relationships the way Carrie was, she only saw men as these two-dimensional characters, you know? they All of the women reduced their partners to very simple plot points instead of allowing for the possibility that their partners are just as complex as they are, that there's a wide range of emotions that they're all experiencing. And just because they're not showing them to you immediately doesn't mean that they're not there. There's absolutely no grace or understanding towards these men. And so, of course, there was no reciprocation about their own feelings. And this oversimplification really made all of them take everything so personally, because there wasn't an allowance for the idea that there was a lot more behind the actions that these men were taking than what met the eye. And because they didn't ask, there was absolutely no dialogue. So they're just these fleeting characters in the show. I mean, we didn't know Mr. Big's name until the last episode of the show. They didn't even use his real name for crying out loud. And this takes away their humanity. This takes away the fact that this is a person. He's not his job. He's not the suit. He's not whatever you're projecting onto him. He is a flesh and blood human being. And because there's no inquiry being launched, of course, there's no real connection between the two of you. And the whole reason that I'm making this video is because I truly believe that we're in a whole new era. It's not about taking back our power through casual sex. It's not about competing with men. And it's definitely not about judging our sisters for how they behave and what they want out of their relationships. We're here to stay in our lane. We're here to work on ourselves. When you work on being a good partner for somebody else, a good partner can come and match that energy with you. I'll definitely be making a video about that. So you guys, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, ciao for now.